How long have I been in there? I'm not dead. This is still here. No, I haven't worked on it. Yeah, it's been hot. Yeah, I've been lazy. Been working on it really all winter, so I guess hot's not a real excuse. But uh, we're here now, and it's summertime, and I actually kind of want to use it, and it's still not done. I guess the elephant in the room, I got a new mic. I don't know if it sounds horrible or if it sounds better. I don't know. I got it on a wrench because I didn't want to put it on my shirt yet. Oh, it's already getting hot. It's like 82 degrees in here. How's this? Check one, two. Who knows? This might be sound good. This is how we're going to try it. Um, the next step on this camper is the fiberglass it. It's actually not the next step. The next step is prepping it for fiberglass. Uh, I never made a video. I recorded some, gave up, got mad. Uh, I was fiberglassing the back door and it kind of got messed up. Uh, there was, the fiberglass wasn't penetrating through the cloth and then it wasn't sticking through the wood and then there was a bunch of air bubbles and things just weren't working out. So I just ripped it off. Um, so I'm gonna have to sand that down a little bit. I got most of the resin off before it cured. Um, but that kind of discouraged me from fiberglassing the rest of this because I don't really want to finish it. Then there's stuff like this, um, the lip that I haven't sanded down flush yet. There's fiberglass, or not fiberglass, there's wood glue all over it in spots. There's a bunch of wood filler and some stuff that still needs filled up that I still have to do. So this video is gonna basically be me getting this ready to fiberglass. As you can tell, it is entirely too tall and fiberglassing the roof of this is gonna be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to take the wheels and the axle off in this video. I'm also gonna take this toolbox off, this front tongue. Um, a lot of people talked about in my one video that the, uh, the axle isn't really gonna work and it's bending and it's not as safe and you name it, there's a lot of things that people said that I shouldn't do. So I'm going to remove the axle, buy a pre-made axle. And it's not because you guys told me not to because that's all the reason for me to keep it on there just to prove you're wrong. But it is making a little bit of camber wear and I'll wear out my tires faster. And the real reason I want to replace the axle is I kind of want to drop the height a little bit. It's a little too tall. Watch me fall and break my leg getting out of here. So we're going to get a drop axle. I want to measure and stuff for that. So once this is off, I'll measure and get some measurements. Speaking of it being 85 degrees in here, I also decided I'm going to put air conditioning in it. A lot of people just cut a hole in their camper and put an air conditioning unit in it. I think that looks stupid and I don't want the air conditioner in there all the time. I Me mean, building the air conditioner, I want to have some ports on here. I don't need to talk about this in this video. I have an air conditioner video coming up. But in this video, I'm going to start tearing this down. Go. Alright, Riley from the future here, and as you can tell, I've started the sanding process. The sanding process took entirely too long, but it was definitely worth it. Uh, I put wood filler in all the cracks and crevices and sanded it down and put more wood filler, sanded it, more wood filler, sanded it, you know, get the idea. Um, I eventually had to get the belt sander out and then started working on the overhangs because I had to take like a quarter inch of material off and the belt sander seemed to be the way to go but I spent a few days just sanding on this thing nonstop, just working to try to get all the edges smooth before I put the fiberglass resin on. Well, I think that's about it for today. I uh, fried my belt sander. My camera's gonna die, but it keeps chewing the belts up. This uh, 
got really hot and then the guide kind of melted and it caused this roller to go this way and it keeps sucking the belt in this way and chewing it up so really no fixing it so i'm about to order me a belt and or not a belt a belt sander and we'll resume when i get that but making some pretty good progress i'm not gonna lie all right in this clip i started to make my own uh wood filler it was just basically the sawdust i got from the sander i put some type bond three uh wood glue in it I don't recommend using Type Bond 3 because it's waterproof and it gives it kind of like a jelly slash like rubbery uh, feel. So I ended up getting some wood filler at Walmart and that ended up working tremendously better than this did. It's just too gummy once it's dry. So I just recommend getting some just off the shelf wood filler. A whole lot easier to make and a whole lot easier to use. All right, now that everything is roughed up and sanded and all the holes are filled, Next step is to be fiberglassed. I decided not to do the fiberglass mat because I've tried it twice and we just couldn't get the fiberglass mat to lay flat without air bubbles and air pockets and it was just a nightmare. So the reason I wanted to do the fiberglass mat is just that it adds a little more strength but it's three quarter inch plywood that's gonna have bed liner over it. We don't need the extra strength. And the reason I wanted to do the fiberglass was also for waterproofing but the waterproofing all comes from the resin. So I have some marine grade resin that I put on the camper. So uh, you put a quart at a time and then there's a hardener, a half an ounce of hardener in there. Mix it up real good. I took a piece of metal and uh, put it in a drill and like, you know, mix it up really well. And then what I did is I took a foam roller and a foam brush, as you'll see, and go up and down uh, on the camper as much as possible. And what I did is I poured the resin as I was rolling it. So in this next clip is gonna be me uh, putting the resin on the camper. Alright, at this point I am using the uh, roller and dumping the resin directly on the roller to help smooth it out. This prevented it from dripping everywhere and it just allowed me to get as much resin on as I could efficiently. After I can finish getting a nice coat of resin on, I'll go back over it like this and smooth it out. I've done a couple coats of this, but it definitely is better if you have somebody to help you out. Somebody to pour it on like this with the roller just to get resin on there. Then somebody to come back over and smooth it all out. Samantha helped me a lot whenever I was doing the first coat, but I recommend having a friend help you. I also spray painted the trailer frame black before I did the white bed liner. I feel like that would have been easier than doing the bed liner afterwards. And this is me showing you how smooth it actually is. You can hear how squeaky clean it is and Samantha definitely approves. Yeah. It's pretty smooth. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I didn't reach there. Barely touched the pedal. And now we're back to my favorite part, sanding. Or should I say the worst part? I sanded so much on this. This is me taking, I think, 220 grit sandpaper over the entire thing just to get that surface roughed up a little bit and to give something for the bed liner to grab hold of. You can really see the difference the sanding makes on how smooth and glossy the uh, resin is versus what it looked like after I put the sandpaper over it.
Here Samantha is taking a rag covered in acetone and just getting all the dust and debris off of the camper before we spray the bed liner. After everything is cleaned off, we then took some masking tape and masked up that black trailer frame that we just painted. We put uh, paper in the windows and around the edges so we didn't get that fiberglass everywhere. It is sticky. It will stick to everything and I mean even the gravel right to this day still has marks where you can see where we painted it at. But we just taped up everything we didn't want sprayed and then we started mixing. tip that I found when mixing this stuff is they don't give you much room at all to shake that bottle up once you add the hardener and the tint into the like the big bottle. There is some room but it like takes up every last ounce of that bottle. So what we found out after the first couple mixes is we put in the hardener first and mixed it up so we just had no tint in there and that gave us some room that it mixed in real nice and uh, well. Then once that was mixed up a little bit we would open it up and put the the tint in there. And like I said, there's like no room for air in there at all. So we mixed that up as best we could. Then we would dump out a little bit into the trash can to just put a, give us a little bit of air so we can mix it in thinner. And then we mix it up even more. And then whenever we put it onto the uh, spray nozzle, it gave it enough room for the, uh, the straw and everything to go down in there without spilling bed liner all down the side of the uh, sprayer. So that's how we did that and avoided making a mess. So now it's time to spray. So what I did is I sprayed three coats. I went horizontal on the first coat and trying to do like a nice even coat. Um, you can see that there's like some zebra striping but I try to come through and finish up all that so it's a nice even coat. The next coat I do, I come back and I do vertical stripes. And then I think I might have went a little too heavy on that coat because it actually, you can still see them in the finished product. But on the third coat, you're supposed to just randomly spray like in a circular pattern. And that kind of helps get rid of some of the lines that come up. But on the camper itself, we started on the top with our vertical lines. And then we moved to horizontal lines and then tried the random spray pattern at the very end. The top wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but I feel like the most important thing with this is to not stop moving. You can't really screw it up if you just keep moving the gun. Alright, so this is where I started doing the uh, vertical lines, and this is the part where I think I went a little too heavy, or I didn't go heavy enough on my third coat with the randomness. I think if I did it all over again, I would do the uh, random coat for the second coat and not do the vertical lines, because you can see them even in the video, all those lines. I thought that they would like, you know, flash off or something, but no, they're still there, and you can see them whenever the light hits it, but I think... I think it will go away once the uh, camper gets a little dirty, but the lines aren't nearly as bad as they are in this video, but they're there. Alright, this is a super sneak preview because the, uh, the trim is already on in this step because I forgot to record what it looks like, but you can see kind of the zebra striping, so on that last coat it helps to like kind of randomize your strokes a little bit, but uh, the bed liner turned out pretty well. It went on super smooth. You can kind of see a little bit of imperfections here and there, but by and large, it went on pretty smooth. But here's a sneak peek of uh, what's to come in the next couple of videos. So I'm gonna get start editing and 
Thanks for watching.